Mm. I mean, does that even... Does this a local explanatory meeting? Does, well, it doesn't necessarily, you know, mean that, you know, the title of it isn't necessarily what, you know, the requirements are. It's like the events that happened in it. I don't know. I feel like with this, it's pretty much like you just gotta unlock them all, have a look at them at least once. Then after that, that's when you put the puzzle together. So it doesn't really matter what order I go in. Go in here, just like just pick the ones that are unlocked and the ones that become unlocked. Let's go with you, EVA. Physical exams are very meaningful for our research. Although it's only for certain age groups, we can examine many of the Himizawa residents at the same time. It's like, this is a hell of a skip in time. Think about it. The damn incident, like that probably was taking part place, you know, around the time that this was built. This feels like it's a little bit after that, if not years later, potentially. So we're gonna get some really weird... I mean, granted, this whole arc has been like that, where it's like the time, you know, between scenes is gonna be... continue to be awkward. So be like, okay, this takes place at a different point in time. There are many of the enemies are residents at the same time, it's perfect for our research center. Also because of several arrangements, we have a monopoly on the villagers' corpses and can perform autopsies on them too. That sounds fucked up. There certainly wasn't an environment this rich an opportunity for those in the medical field. Follow up on the work for the late Dr. Tarkno is going smoothly. The amount of data has com he compiled is absolutely astounding. He truly was an incredible researcher. It's like, you know, at this point, Dr. Tark now, he's deceased. But I wonder if in one of these fragments we actually, you know, get that point in time where he actually does pass. Or maybe we already did, secondly, in the backstory. Excuse me, Director. Oh, Tark no san Thanks for your work. It's like, this whole novel up to this point has been from your perspective. And now you're finally on screen because it's no longer from your perspective. At least in this fragment it isn't. We just received the rest of the test results from Tokyo. Here they are. Thank you. It's getting interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad we can share this joy. Dr. Knight is my assistant who was, who was sent from the self-defense force. Oh my god, she was cloned! <laughs> what did, you, did you see that? She just appeared twice. She was there, she was there. What the fuck was that? But she's far from the image of, I have of an SDF officer. Just like our research is being concealed. Maybe her identity is concealed too. I'm sure her name is an alias as well. Well, technically not. That is her name. I mean, her original name was Mayoko Tananashi. But she changed it to, you know, be close to her adopted grandfather. So it's technically not really, but it is kind of at the same time, I guess. I'm just a doctor and a researcher. Without Tarkin Hassan's support, it would be impossible for me to manage this institution. To use the pipeline to her clients in Tokyo, my assistant, as well as a researcher who's an expert on Hindu syndrome. Her existence is absolutely necessary here. The more I think about it, the more I feel this should have been the Tarkno Institute rather than the Uriya Institute. And she should have been the director. But that was explained to me when they asked me to take this position. My client wanted a civilian to manage this place. They researched for a person who met their requirements, and there I was. I became the director. I have a feeling I'm just a puppet on the strings. No shit. More than you could ever know, Eerie. I won't just sit here and do nothing. 
I was asked to do research, research on rare disease. I am a researcher, so of course I'm excited about that. My client's goal might be different, but I'm here out of desire to unravel the mysteries of Henry's Isle Syndrome and be the first person to uncover a new mystery for mankind. This sounds like it probably was in the early days of the Institute. Well, the uh, clinic, because, you know, his goal would have probably been, you know, a little bit more motivated for, you know, because of Satoko. Like, the longer he, like, was there researching the, you know, he go grew close to the villagers. And, like, instead of just being all about, yeah, let's try to unravel this mystery, when beyond that was like, no, let's help these people. He's like, he wants to help. We have all the data that suggests the existence of parasite as the cause of syndrome, yet we still can't find vectoral evidence of the culprit microbe itself. It's true, I thought we'd find it easily if we used it on an electron microscope. Viruses are too small to see with a regular microscope, so the invention of the electron microscope was a dramatic advancement in the world of medicine. However, it's very expensive and there's no way a normal doctor for a normal doctor to acquire one. Like Dr. Dagner said, an electron microscope could find the cause of disease, but it seems his theory has been proven wrong. Probably much to Takano's frustration. Even Takano San was hoping an electron microscope would find it. She was disappointed when she didn't uncover anything after all the autopsies she performed. Our research seems to be having its first snag, and has actually stalled our work for several weeks now. So we need to think about where to go from here. Which means there's either smaller than microscope. Uh, they're either smaller than mi uh, microscopic, or maybe there's something wrong with the specimen itself. What do you mean? For example, as you know, we, wild mice have tons of fleas on them. But they can't find fleas on dead mice. It's because when the mice die, mouse dies, the habitat dies as well. Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling I was reading the wrong wrong perspective. The habitat dies as well. So if the host dies, the parasite's world will end too. That's right. It's like you won't find a living human in a post-apocalyptic world. Therefore, we just have to look into the Earth before it ends, right? <laughs> That's true. However, we need to think about human rights. It's hard to look into a brain while the patient is still alive. Yeah, this was clearly the turning point where it went from, you know, okay, it's like, okay, starts off instant enough with the research, and then it's like, okay, let's take more drastic measures. Examine a living human's brain. No matter how you sugarcoat it, it's that bore very grave meaning. From a medical standpoint, it's necessary. But we have rules and morals in this world, and we have to advance medicine with, in such boundaries. There was a time when I was studying lobotomies for the betterment of mankind. I guess we're gonna see his perspective on him realizing how wrong he was then. I don't think- oh, he's denying it though, I don't think it was wrong. <laughs> ever. Could I ever be forgiven under our ideas of ethics? I don't know. One day my judgment will be handed down by the devil. Whether I'm guilty or not, I have to accept it. As I reflected upon my past, I heard a voice. It was tough in his hands. It was very clear and simple, yet it struck me with surprise. Struck me, I mean. Understood. Let me prepare a world on the verge of death. What? I'm startled. Sometimes the phrase advancing medicine bore the whisper of the devil tempting us to accept sacrifices. I heard that devil whisper. <laughs> it's not that difficult. I just have to find a hidden bizarre uh, resident who is about to die, that's all. But, even if you're about to die, you would be brave enough to provide the body for research while still alive. Don't worry about that. If they're dying anyway, we're just going to put them to sleep a little sooner. On paper, of course. <laughs> the patient would be legally declared dead, even though they're still alive. And we'd reform an autopsy while they're still alive. That's impossible. Besides, if we perform neurological surgery, we have to do a circle insertion on their cranial area. Their family will notice the marks of shawl. That's where we come in. I'll have the mountain dogs look for a patient in the local hospital that matches our needs immediately. All you have to do is wait with a knife and fork in your hands. 
I'll bring you a meal right away. <laughs> that's that's fucked up talk now. <laughs> uh, when you're talking to son is my partner, there's no question about that. But I just can't trust her. Was that him laughing? And if it was, I am gonna assume it was a nervous laugh. Sir Extremities is a researcher which contrasts largely with mine. So I guess even like early on he probably like was like, uh, what you talking about? Uh, you have a bit of an extreme edge to you, don't you? <laughs> probably didn't say it to her face though. But are we so different? I'm here simply waiting with a knife and a fork in my hands just as she told me to. It's like literally a knife and fork. It's just like okay, uh, uh, I got this regular fork and this regular knife, you know. Just like uh, Eerie, that's not really gonna cut it. Literally, that that shit. I just don't want to witness such a gruesome scene. That's all. What she's preparing for me now is exactly what I want. Who's the hypocrite? Not her. It's me. How can I say I'm different knowing what I've done in the past? I have performed lobotopies without the patient's consent, despite it being surgery that might affect their life forever. How is that different from what she's doing? Without consent as well. That's pretty damn bad, Eerie. I've never doubted my past achievements. However, when I look at her, I start to feel unease. Talking to San is talking to Okunogi-san on the intercom in my office. I'm sure she's telling him to come over so she can explain him what was just discussed. I'm simply watching without stopping her. I begin to reflect upon my past to remember why I chose to become a doctor. And he reflected in a different fragment probably then. You can definitely see how it is, how it works, though. Like, the previous one, that probably also has, like, a hint of where the next fragment should go in the puzzle. It's like that one clearly go to, you know, him reflecting on his past. Let's actually see. No, it wouldn't be that. Yeah, here is backgrounds. But it says Kyosuke Ryu's reminiscence is required. And we don't have that, so that's a bit confusing. Hmm. I was listening to. Oh. That's definitely connected. Hmm. Let's get Hamatake. The way these fragments are gonna be unlocked seems a bit... I don't know, maybe if I clicked on that backstory for Yuri, it would have been like, oh yeah, you got that, so now you can go on here. But it says the reminiscence is required. And he didn't fully reminisce, he was clearly going into that, but that was the end of that fragment, so it's a bit confusing. The forecast said there was a gentle rain in the evening, but I didn't think it would rain so hard. We decided to wait at an abandoned bus stop for the rain glad to clear. I'm uh, sorry, Dr. San. Oh, don't be, uh, don't be, Jirasan. I knew it would pour, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Just like, no, she didn't laugh maniacally like that. Time is ungiggled. As she said, the world might change suddenly, I dragged her out here. I feel stupid for making her come along and ending up ruining her best day off. This, is this before or after they got together? I have to go back to Tokyo tonight, so it'll be a while before I can return to Hidemizawa. I didn't want to spend my last day in a cheap hotel in North America, so I asked her to go for a stroll. It's just... Uh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> she teased me for a while, but only a little. 
He wasn't actually enjoying driving me into a corner. That's just her way of communicating and I find it very charming. I think I've become captivated by her. You've fallen into a trap. But on her part, I'm just an auditor from Tokyo. That's why she's being nice to me and it's definitely not because she likes me personally. So I feel like I might have used my position to drag her out of here and that makes me a little depressed. You know, while, you know, that tech it feels that way, you know, from how Minigurosu played out, it seemed like he did at least kind of like the guy. So it's not like the feelings aren't there, it's just that, you know. She's not gonna get in the way of her achieving her goals. I probably should think this slight fever I have is due to nothing more than a cold. But she was the type of person who made it clear when she disliked something. She wouldn't say so directly, but she would use all kinds of indirect expressions that meant the same thing. So I want to believe she's out here because she might be even a little bit affected. Ah, I shook my head as I frowned upon my silver shirts. She chuckled as though she knew what I was thinking. I felt myself suddenly go red after that. So this is definitely private to get the gallery back. You're a mysterious person, Teresa. I bet women don't like you leave you alone, huh? So why are you hanging out with a weirdo like me? A weirdo? No way. And what's weirdo in Japanese here? Uh, oh, it's all in freaking Aragana. <laughs> That's convenient. Or Kashina Nanta Koto Nayo. Whatever, and then it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, you're fascinating, Dr. Sai. Actually, I feel bad making you spend a day with someone like me. Of course, I've decided to devote my life to my work, but I have a suit drive for only that. I need to uh, switch gears once in a while. Besides, communicating with the opposite sex is good for the brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good if I manage to help you clear your head. But you feel refreshed just being with me. She gives me an impish smile that makes my heart skip a beat. Tried hiding my embarrassment so she wouldn't notice even my ears going red. Uh, of course, when I'm with you, uh, you know I do feel refreshed. Yeah. That if you learn about avian photography, I'll get a hobby to share my hobby. With. But if I'm out, so next time I'll bring my own camera. It's really expensive, so buy a new one, you know. <laughs> I can't tell who's talking now. I'm, I'm completely confused. I didn't show you who went there for you. Well, we are, you know, we're gonna get some further context. God damn it. Yeah, that's his dialogue. Yeah. Thank you. I would love to learn about the avian photography that you're so intrigued by. Looking forward to joining you on a stroll next time you go. So, I don't need to buy a camera, do I? No, try with my old camera first, and if you enjoy it, then you can buy one for yourself. I'll send it to you when I get back to Tokyo. Thank you. Then I'll have you critique my photos when you come next time. Uh, sure. <laughs> I can hardly wait to see them. There'll be nothing compared to yours. It'll be my very first time doing it, you know. Much gifts are cool uh, and smiles, all I can do is blush and scratch my head. Am I being conceited? I can't help but think the talk this Sam likes being with me. If it's mere flattery, I don't think she'd come along this far. Oh, no, 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 no. Taking women's flattery seriously is a mistake I always make. I shouldn't assume that she's attractive. By the way, isn't this the first time we've been alone like this? Uh, yeah, you're right. Usually a director or some other research staff is around. I don't know anything about it. I don't know exactly what you do in Tokyo, or what you've done in the past. I wonder what you do in the self-defense force. 
<laughs> I was an instructor for a while. But I hurt my eye when I was injured. I can live life normally, but they made a big deal out of it. And ever since, all I do is nest work. <laughs> I understand giggles saying I must have done something silly to cause the injury. And when I helped PR with the magazine, I became fascinated by photography. Cameras have the power to make people happy. <laughs> I bet you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's true. Since I started taking pictures, my life has been a lot happier. How can a camera make someone happy? Well, a camera takes a snapshot of the moment of life. Of course, you want to capture a moment that's good for happiness, right? So you look for happiness through the viewfinder. And as you search, you realize your everyday life is actually filled with happiness. For example, a dandelion spreading from the crack of the asphalt is just a weed in a busy day. But when you look at it through the viewfinder, it's a gift to let you know that spring is approaching. You capture it and put it in an album. And every time you open the album, you remember the happy feeling you had when you took the picture. So I always feel that way when you take your pictures. Sure, I don't have ambitions of taking artistic photos or capturing a romantic prize of any moment. That's not important to me. I want those moments we don't notice. And helping us recognize those little moments of happiness is the greatest thing about capturing to me. So I'm really glad to be able to see enemies out through my viewfinder. Oh, you know, he sounds like the Bob Ross of photography. <laughs> it's just like, and here we have a happy little flower. <laughs> Hmm. I have a chance to go overboard when I talk, but most of the time, talking to someone playfully twists my words right back at me. So it's very unusual for her to listen to me like this. I understand, sat down next to me and tried to fiddle with my camera. I don't know how much of an impression I made, but I think she's indeed interested in cameras. I was expecting her to tease me like usual, so I'm happy to see that this is her reaction. Do you want to try? Do you think I can? It's easy. First, you just need to learn how to focus and press the shutter. How don't you hold this? Oh, uh, don't ever touch the lens, though. So. This isn't easy. Yeah, <laughs> just like wait until, you know, phones become a thing, you know? Mobile phones and smartphones, then you can have a camera that all you need is just like me. And that's that. Did you seem to show an interest in cameras? I wanted to take a walk around Amazon and take some pictures of the scenery. But unfortunately, the rain doesn't seem to want to stop. You know? It's just like... I mean, it would make no sense. But picture this. Every background image we see, Tomotake took those pictures. It's like, how? He's the fictional character. But she was still having fun and kept taking pictures inside the bus stop. Did I read the previous line? I always have a habit of that, but unfortunately rain doesn't seem to want to stop. So the first set of pictures she ever took were of odd things in that dark little building. Since then, every time we'd meet, we ended up walking around the village with our cameras in our hands. And she did put it to use, uh, when she got to uh, see the inside of the ritual storehouse. It must have been dark in there, so the flash must have been very necessary. Right. Fragment, yeah, that one's available. Start with the damp construction operation withdrawal. I mean, who, who's talking? Is this going to be talk from those perspective? Sorry for being late. I had an unusually large number of patients today. Nope. I had a... Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's rare for the characters to be on screen like that. Well, not really, but for it to open up like that is just a bit confusing. Hey, they even have the text log from the previous one. Sorry for being late. I had an unusually large number of patients today. Thank you for coming, Lieutenant Colonel Leary. Leary, Tomodaki stood up suddenly and saluted when he saw Leary come into the room. All right, all right, sub called me Lieutenant Colonel. 
I'm a doctor. I just can't get used to military ranks. And they call me director instead. Understood, director Eerie. <laughs> Some Taki, of course, knew that Eerie didn't like to be called lieutenant colonel, so it was something of a joke. They laughed casually together. On the other hand, Tarkner looked raw fed up with it. She couldn't stand hearing the same joke over and over, and was even thinking about talking to Tom Taki about it. But she didn't want to hurt his feelings, so she simply never had a chance. Maybe it's because of how Tomitaki pronounces it, but she keeps hearing a resale lieutenant colonel in Japanese on Nisa. What? <laughs> what? Now that's the uh, wait green uh, No. Where's where's the Nisa bit then? I'm confused. Is this a. I'm not going to pronounce it, but she keeps hearing a Risa, Lieutenant Colonel, in Japanese. Oh, I see. So it's not pronouncing the N right, so it comes out as Risa instead of Nisa. Okay. Once she heard it that way, she kept hearing Iria Risa every time Tomodaka said it. When Dark Knight told Eerie about it, he had a good laugh. Today was just a simple meet and greet, and tomorrow was the actual meeting. Tom Tech had already arrived, but there would be more inspectors from Tokyo at the meeting, waiting to hear about the progress that had been made. Anyway, I hear the whole village is up in arms about the dam construction project. You can say that again. This village is such a mess. In such a mess, I would just say in the local medical explanation meeting as an official, but the whole thing was alive with angry shouts and profanities. After the beast Kilimizar Dam project was announced, the village was consumed with uproar. The government retracted their plans for concessions rather early on. They made their aggressive stance clear. They didn't want the locals to take advantage of them by showing their willingness to compromise. However, they had backfired horribly. As they had historical ties to the land, the government's actions only made their bond stronger. Neither the government nor the locals wanted to back down. People from Himizawa are rather hot-tempered, maybe because they're the descendants of demons. It's not funny. That wild meeting lasted all night. I feel your pain. <laughs> really, it's not funny, Tomataki san so what's going on with the dam construction? Are they really going to submerge this village? Tokyo is applying their pressure to the situation too. Things might seem glamorous on the surface, but in truth, the behind it are wavering rather hard. I hope their presence produces effects soon. The whole village is buzzing with action from dusk to dawn, and I worry the villagers' minds are growing agitated. Sometimes I have to listen to my patients go on and on about their opinion on the dam construction plan. Why do you uh, uh, even listen to them? You're too nice. I have to. I'm a clinic director first and research center director second. It's part of my job to listen to them. It's very nice of you. It's admirable. Maybe this is Irie. I know the people in Tokyo will call off the plan sooner or later, but the villagers won't, so they have to live in fear that they might be forced to leave the land where they have lived for generations. God damn it, why'd they have to change the freaking angle now that they don't appear on screen and they can't tell who's talking? Even if they're told to leave, they don't have money, and a lot of them are old. Maybe some wanted an increase in the amount of compensation they'd been offered. But the government changes mind. I don't think it's possible for them to come to a peaceful agreement at this point. There were actually some villagers who were satisfied with that amount and were willing to leave. However, the Sonazaki family didn't want to change their stance against the issue. They are actually leading the villagers in the fight against the government. There are blaring announcement vans everywhere, and ads and flyers are attached to the circulation notices. A serious matter for them. I guess I can understand. 
I hope the construction plan will be called off soon, for their sake. Once it's called off, this village will become beautiful once again. I know that, of course. Things are moving right along in Tokyo, so please give us a little more time. So please give us a little more time. <laughs> it's like, now it's just like the perspective is all over the place. I've heard a rumor from Tokyo that you're having problems finding a way to pressure the minister construction. Is that true? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I've heard myself that they are having a little problem with some of the details. Darkner had powerful people throughout there, but they didn't control all Japan. There were some things I excelled in, but also other things that they weren't too good at. Find a way to put pressure onto the Minister of Construction and fell into the latter. In all seriousness, though, we really won't be facing any requests to leave this area because of the dam, right? Of course not. I can guarantee that won't happen. It's just taking longer than we thought, that's all. So please continue your research. We were told that if things can't be resolved peacefully, then we may have to use drastic measures. Drastic measures? What do you mean, tomataki san You don't need to worry about that, Bart. Have we ever seen that serious expression on Tomataki's face before? I feel like we haven't. Director Irie, please let us take care of it. I see. Okay. Thank you for your work. It's fine, Director Irie. The dam construction plan will be called off. It's already been decided. <laughs> I was talking to Giggle, Tom Tiger to laughed too. However, Irie couldn't understand what was so funny, so he felt left out. Irie only understood the meaning of those drastic measures when he examined a young boy he had never seen in the village before. What could that be? Just like, what could that be? Was that a notification sound effect? Yes, it was. Just like, oh, <laughs> but what could that be? Being, you know, where will that scene lead? And how do we save? Do we just click exit? It's a bit confusing, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, nearly two hour recording. Well, nearly an hour, 50 minutes in a few seconds. But yeah, I was, uh, that do my throat is starting to ache from doing Tom Attacker's voice there. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm interested though. I really am. I'm intrigued to see, you know, where the rest of this is going. I mean, it's been years since I've actually, you know, read all the novels. So like, when I started helping the Higurashi novels, that's, that's pretty much the second time I've read these novels. And the first time I read them was quite a few years prior to that. And considering how many years have passed, since playing, you know, let's playing uh, Onikakushi the first arc, and how long it's taken to get to this arc, you know, considerable amount of time is added on to that, and it's just like, I can't remember shit, man. I mean, I can remember how it all resolves in the end, but I can't remember all of the little details. Can I and that's one we're gonna go for. And Sudoku's one. Maybe when you like go for all the ones that are unlocked at the start, maybe that's when some of them get unlocked, I don't know. But anyways, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.